All right, here we are, lesson number three in our series, uh, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective Christians, Ministers, Elders, and Deacons. In this third session, we're going to deal with effective deacons. Uh, let me go back to uh, talking about the uh, idea that for the title that comes from a, a book uh, entitled uh, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People uh, by Stephen Covey. Um, in this book, as I mentioned before, he reviews 200 years of literature devoted to success and human development. And what he did was he uh, distilled you know, what he learned into seven basic uh, principles. Very popular book many years ago and still uh, quite high on the bestseller list today. Now his conclusion uh, was that successful and effective people, regardless of the time and place they lived in, shared some common characteristics that enabled them to become highly effective uh, as artists or politicians, business people, teachers, so on and so forth. In essence, he says that they were people who were motivated by principles rather than profit. People who worked at being something rather than having something. And so using Mr. Covey's approach, I've used the Bible and my experience in church work to identify some of the characteristics that make for successful Christian living and effective ministry as elders and ministers. And so, as I said before, in this session, I'd like to close out the series with a lesson describing the seven habits of highly uh, effective deacons. Now, the Bible doesn't list the qualities needed for being effective as a deacon, like Mr. Covey does in his book, but it does give us a model that we can study. A man named Stephen was one of the first to be chosen by the church and appointed by the apostles to serve the church in a special way. And he therefore established a template for being a deacon uh, for being a, a servant in the church uh, in the role of deacon. So in looking at his life, we can determine the kind of habits necessary to become not just a deacon, but effective as a deacon. You know, a lot of times we spend a lot of time going over the qualifications of elders, the qualifications of deacons and so on and so forth, so that these uh, uh, men uh, you know, are quote, qualified to serve in this role, but we don't often talk about what they need to do to be effective and successful in this role. So looking at Stephen's life uh, in the Bible uh, will help us to determine the habits necessary to become effective as a deacon. Now a brief portrait of Stephen is given in the book of Acts and I would encourage you to take out your Bibles to Acts chapter 6. Also uh, more material about Stephen in Acts chapter 7. But I want to begin by reading in Acts chapter 6, beginning in verse 1. It says the following. Now at this time, while the disciples were increasing in number, a complaint arose uh, on the part of the Hellenistic Jews against the native Hebrews because their widows were being overlooked in the daily serving of food. So the twelve summoned the congregation of the disciples and said, it is not desirable for us to neglect the word of God in order to serve tables. Therefore, brethren, select from among you seven men of good reputation, full of the spirit and of wisdom, whom we may put in charge of this task. But we will devote ourselves to prayer and to the ministry of the word. The statement found approval with the whole congregation and they chose Stephen, a man full of faith and of the Holy Spirit. All right, let's just stop there just with Stephen. They chose others, but I just want to talk about Stephen for the time being. Now, from this opening description, we can quickly see what the very first habit of an effective deacon ought to be. Number one habit, effective deacon, an effective deacon needs to be spiritually minded. You know, Stephen was a man who believed and in whose life the Spirit was at work. Notice that the Apostle said, being full of the Spirit. Well, being full of the Spirit uh, means that the Spirit is producing much fruit. You know, love, joy, peace, patience. You know, 
So being full of the Spirit means you're, you're, you're producing a lot of spiritual fruit. That's how you know you're full of the Spirit. It also means that the word of the Spirit is alive in you. In other words, you know the word, you obey the word, and it is producing things in your life, spiritual things. You know, Jesus said in John chapter 4, verse 23, that God is looking for those who will worship Him, how? In spirit and in truth. Well, Stephen was such a man. You know, we, we, we mistakenly think that so long as deacons know how to do tasks like carpentry or web hosting or whatever, they're qualified. But the Bible says that the first criteria, the first habit that should be evident in them is that they are spiritually minded men, men who truly believe, men who know and practice the words of Christ. Habit number two, effective deacons are those who are effective workers. Let's go back to chapter six, verse seven, shall we? It says, the word of God kept on spreading and the number of the disciples continued to increase greatly in Jerusalem and a great many of the priests were becoming obedient to the faith. Now, I want you to notice that the task of feeding the poor widows is not mentioned again. What is mentioned, however, is the continued growth of the church and along with that growth, the probable increase in the need for ministry. If you know, they had a great need to feed the widows when they were you know, several thousand, you add a couple of more thousand people, obviously that need will grow along with the growth in numbers for the church. And so you, know, you read between the lines, what you see is that once the apostles gave the task over to Stephen and the others, it was taken care of without further mention. This means that the apostles were free to minister the word and pray and shepherd the church, the task that they were called to. The poor received the food that they needed and the church continued to grow. What is important to Stephen was the fact that the job was done and it was done right, not the fact that he was now a deacon. You see, the task is what's important not the title. Deacons are the ones that do a lot of the heavy lifting in the church. That's the point of being the deacon. They're the ones that do the heavy lifting. They're the ones that do you know, the hard jobs, the dirty jobs at times. Uh, deacons not only know how to serve, they want to serve and they are good at it because they have developed the habit of effective service. All right, habit number three. Effective deacons also have the habit of submitting to leadership. Let's read verse eight, chapter six. It says, and Stephen, full of grace and power, was performing great wonders and signs among the people. Now, although Stephen was already a man of great faith and spirituality, he did not see his role as one to advise or conflict with his leaders. He had the support of the congregation, but he did not use this to divide the church or develop a following or influence. Notice I read a passage that said the, the great skills, the great gifts that, uh, that Stephen demonstrated. But you know, along with those gifts, along with the powerful signs that, that, would, uh, that were happening through him, he was not one to form a clique or a challenge to the elders. He merely did his work and allowed God to work in him. And so effective deacons respect the leadership of other men. Even though these men may be weak or sinful at times, their wisdom is demonstrated in their submission to God's plan. So even when he could exercise miraculous powers, Stephen continued to serve and submit to the leadership of the apostles. Another habit, habit number four of effective deacons, is that they continually develop their skills. Verse nine, continue reading with me please. It says, but some men from what was called the synagogue of the freedmen, including both uh, Cyrenians and Alexandrians, and some from Cilicia and Asia, rose up and argued with Stephen, but they were unable to cope with the wisdom of the spirit with which uh, he was uh, speaking. And so here we have uh, successful, effective deacons are always expanding their capacity to serve. Stephen, for example, began with the task of benevolence and food distribution, but he developed and used his other gifts as well. He used his gifts to evangelize. He used his wisdom 
to defend the faith. You know, sometimes deacons think they are limited and can only do one thing, but in order to grow, we need to follow a pattern for growth, which is relatively simple to explain. There is a pattern you know, for growth, individual growth, individual ministry growth in the church. The pattern for personal growth in ministry is follows. A, learn how to do the job yourself. B, teach somebody else to do the job and to do it well. C, you learn a new job. D, repeat the cycle. <laughs> very simple, very basic. This is how deacons grow, how they help the church to grow, and how they gain satisfaction from their work. Not only do they do the work well, but they gain satisfaction from teaching others how to work well uh, as well. All right, number five, habit number five. Effective deacons, this is a tough one, have learned to take criticism well. Have learned to take criticism well. There's nothing that you can do in the church. If you decide you're going to do something, whatever it is, paint the wall. There will always be somebody who, well, you painted it too white or it's too dark or oh, you missed the spot. You know? Anything you do, anything you rise up to do is subject to criticism. So effective deacons know how to take criticism well. I go back to chapter six, this time verse 11. It says, then they secretly induced men to say, we have heard him speak blasphemous words against Moses and against God. And they stirred up the people and elders and the scribes and they came up to him and dragged him away and brought him before the council. They put forward false witnesses who said, this man incessantly speaks against this holy place and the law. For we have heard him say that this Nazarene Jesus will destroy this place and alter the customs which Moses handed down to us. And fixing their gaze on him, all who were sitting in the council saw his face like uh, the face of an angel. Well, Stephen's increased ability and ministry made him subject to attack. You know, so long as he was serving food to the widows, you know, he was kind of uh, taking care of a problem. But as soon as he developed his ministry, you know, cultivated other aspects of his ministry and began to be more effective in the church, uh, he was subject to uh, attack. However, however, he was able to keep a sweet Christian spirit even when unjust attacks were made against him. And aren't these the hardest of all to suffer? You know, the attacks that we don't deserve? You know, leadership of any kind is like that. It makes us visible, it makes us accountable, and it makes us attackable. Deacons, and especially their wives, need to understand and accept this reality. So many times the deacon is attacked for something he's doing or something he's trying to get accomplished in the church, and the, and the one who suffers the most is his wife. So it's very important, you know, the wives of deacons, you know, they also need to be able to uh, 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 deal with criticism in a, in a positive way. And so the, 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 the successful, effective deacon will be able to do his very best, be criticized for it, and still maintain his spiritual balance and enthusiasm, because that's why deacons quit. You know, they're tired of being criticized. They're tired of being you know, uh, measured all the time. And so they become discouraged and they, and, they, and they quit. So it's very important. Successful, effective deacons, they know that criticism is coming and they know how to, how to handle it. So now we know that the successful deacon will have already cultivated this habit you know, of weathering criticism because he will have already mastered the next habit even before becoming a deacon. And that is the number six habit of a highly effective deacon is that he has the habit of studying the word. And uh, our reference for that is chapter seven here. We don't have time, uh, verses one to 54. This is a very long passage that, again, we're not going to read, but in it, Stephen, as he is brought before the religious leaders of his day, is able to defend the faith that he has. He reviews the history of the Jews and God's dealing with them. Uh, this summary demonstrates that Stephen knew God's word and he knew it well. In front of his accusers, he was able to explain what God really said and what God really meant in His word. And this, you know, this ability to speak and to defend the faith requires study, requires Bible reading. He was strong in the scriptures and this made him a powerful witness when the opportunity arose. 
you know, Bible study and service are not mutually exclusive. You know, I, I served at a congregation once where several of the deacons, you know, they would roam the halls during Bible class and then hang out in the kitchen and have a coffee you know, and maybe open the door for somebody coming in and out of, the, out of the, the worship service. They thought that their service, their deacon service, was you know, putting the communion trays away and monitoring the door and they thought that this excused them from ever attending Bible class or ever attending a worship service. In other words, they were deacons but they never heard a sermon and they never heard a Bible class. Being a deacon or doing the work of a deacon is not some kind of hall pass to get you out of studying God's word. As a matter of fact, knowing the word well is what enables a deacon to do and serve in ways uh, that are in accordance to God's will and thus effective. You can't be an effective deacon if you don't know God's word. You see, it's not just what you do or how much you do that makes you an effective deacon. It's if you do it according to the spirit and the will of God. And for this to happen, you actually have to know His word. Finally, effective deacons have the habit of relying on God, relying on God. So let's go to chapter seven in the book of Acts. This time flip over, uh, flip over rather to verse, um, verse 54. We're going to pick it up in verse 54. It says the following. Now when they heard this, this is the group that was uh, attacking uh, you know, Stephen and uh, Stephen makes his defense, a very eloquent defense, solid in the word. It says, now when they heard this, they were cut to the quick and they began gnashing their teeth at him. But being full of the Holy Spirit, he gazed intently into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. And he said, behold, I see the heavens open up and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. But they cried out with a loud voice and covered their ears and rushed at him with one impulse. When they had driven him out of the city, they began stoning him, and the witnesses laid aside their robes at the feet of a young man named Saul. They went on stoning Stephen as he called on the Lord and said, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then falling on his knees, he cried out with a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. Having said this, he fell asleep. Now, in his worst moment, Stephen reveals the essential quality that made him an effective deacon. He relied totally on God. In everything he did, from serving food to preaching and debating, which led to his witness of faith that cost him his life, Stephen was a man who sought after and depended on God for all things. We need to understand that becoming a deacon has a double-edged quality to it. Many times men are chosen for this role because, well, they're talented, they're self-starters, they're successful, they're good organizers. With time, however, we find out that these very qualities often lead these men to rely on themselves, to rely on their own skills or their own strength. The result is that these kinds of men often wait until they are in deep trouble or over the edge before they'll call out to others for help or to call on God for help. The highly effective deacon is a man who puts his talents and abilities and resources into God's hands and depends wholeheartedly on the Lord to direct and to support him in ministry. And so, you know, whether it be planting flowers or helping the poor, managing the budget or visiting and caring for the sick and the dying, all things are done in the strength of the Lord and for His glory. You know, I, I find it amazing. I don't know if you've kind of noticed this. I find it amazing that it was not an apostle or a preacher or an elder who was first martyred for Christ. It was a deacon. It was a deacon. And isn't it amazing that the death of this deacon served as the catalyst for an evangelistic thrust that eventually brought one of the murderers one of his murderers, Saul of Tarsus, to Christ. The Bible says that deacons who serve well, meaning who serve effectively, receive a high standing and have confidence in Jesus Christ. That's 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 13. 
Well, Stephen li Stephen's life shows that he received both of these things. First of all, he received honor or high standing. Uh, he received honor because he had the privilege of giving up his entire life in one moment for the glory of Christ. Martyrdom is a great and high privilege. Uh, not many people have this opportunity. And secondly, he had great confidence before death because God opened his eyes to see the kingdom of heaven in heaven and the Lord Himself there at the right hand of God. And Stephen, very much like the Apostle Paul, saw all of this while he was still in his earthly body. You know, Paul talks about that, you know, being caught up into the heavens to see and hear things, right? Well, Stephen in the same way sees things, actually describes them in heaven, but he's still in his earthly body. Now there's, you know, there's, no, <laughs> there's no guarantee that our deacons will not have to face death for Christ. Let's, let's hope not. And there's no promise that they will glimpse the heavenly realm while here on this earth. However, they do receive honor from the Lord in His word for their service, and they are respected by the church for their special leadership and their role in ministry. In addition to this, they will have greater knowledge of and intimacy with the Lord as they grow to resemble Him more and more through their service in His name. The more you serve in His name, the more like Him you become. And this is a great, great reward for all those who serve as deacons. You know, there is a reward for serving as a deacon and the wise deacon will pursue these through effective service. Well, as we close out this lesson, uh, I'd like to take this opportunity to commend all the deacons everywhere for their good work and exhort them to press forward in the search and the effort to be highly effective in their ministry. This can be achieved by cultivating the habits that I mentioned in this session. Let's do them over again. Highly effective deacons have the habit of spiritual mindedness, conscientious service, submission to leadership, the ongoing development of their skills, a humble spirit in dealing with criticism, a knowledge of God's word, and an absolute trust in the Lord for all things. Well, I hope that these habits will begin to describe your ministry and your spirit as deacons as we all strive to serve the Lord with all of our hearts and all of our minds and all of our strength. And I pray that God blesses you, those of you who've attended these, uh, uh, these lessons, those of you who are watching uh, online or uh, through uh, DVD copies, so on and so forth, I hope that these lessons have been encouraging and they've helped uh, give you insight into the habits of highly successful Christians, uh, ministers, elders, and deacons. God bless you, we'll see you again another time.